I had some people ask me about my workshop and where I'm going to be filming some more videos. So I thought real quickly I would do a quick tour around the workshop, kind of show you some key things that I use for pinball repair. Uh, the one thing that you'll note here is I am kind of obsessed with the organization. Uh, so I have uh, three different organizers here at the top. So the first thing is uh, you've got a lot of different fuses. Uh, so when Radio Shack was going out of business here in the U.S., I went a little crazy and bought uh, lots of fuses. Uh, the other thing you'll see here is that I went ahead and bought, you know, this is pretty much new stock of things that you'll find throughout a pinball machine. Uh, on the left side here, you really kind of go through 440, 632s, and 832s down to maybe 1032 machine screws. So 832, 832 at quarter, uh, a lot of these could be used in um, coil stops, hold co hold, holding coil stops to assemblies. Uh, and what I do is I buy a lot of these and have them here on store. Uh, if you're in the U.S., I would definitely recommend looking at McMaster Car. Uh, that's where I buy all my hardware and uh, uh, nuts and bolts from. Uh, I find that to be a lot more cheaper than places like Lowe's or Home Depot. Uh, I, I think it's just really great to, to have that kind of, in, you know, to get a lot of this, in, a lot of this stuff very cheap. So instead of going to Lowe's and spending, you know, maybe five dollars for fifteen screws, you can buy a hundred for, you know, three bucks. Uh, so a couple of different sizes. Uh, your quarter inch size is going to be really great here, uh, definitely for a majority of things. Williams, uh, early Valley, early Salt States. Uh, I do buy 440s. I find these are good for pop bumpers. So especially Data East, uh, 5 16th or 3 quarters uh, usually work very well from that perspective. Uh, lock nuts. So there are two different styles of lock nuts that you want to buy. The first one are these vinyl lock nuts. So you can see here if I'll move this a little bit closer. Just a, a vinyl lock nut. If you've taken anything apart in a pinball machine, these are... <laughs> always uh, found. You'll also find these ones that have the built-in kind of lock, oh, excuse me, that's the wrong one, uh, some built-in lock washers. So again, I, another kind of great little thing. I, I try to always replace one-to-one -one on that. You also look for things like flat washers. So here's a box of just eight, uh, machine size eight flat washers. Always great to have those. So uh, the last thing, if you're doing any early solid state, are these acorns. So McMaster Car sells these acorns very cheap. Uh, here are some white ones and then also some black. Uh, depending on the machine, I may actually switch out between black and white. I like some more than others. Uh, all the way down to these 3 eighths here. So these are going to be your usual leg leveler uh, nuts. Uh, some folks will also use these internally like through a leg plate and help to hold the leg bolts through the leg plates, especially if you've got a stripped leg plate. Uh, it's always best to change out your leg plates, but if you need a quick fix, uh, that will do it as well. Moving on, I do want to kind of move up here to the top. Uh, one thing I do a lot of work as well is board work. So I do keep different uh, pins of different sockets that are available, 24 pin being the most common. If you're doing any type of NV RAM change, uh, potential ROM change, if you've got you know, old sockets that don't, um, uh, aren't up to the tough, uh, up to the measure anymore. So if you've got like those scan B sockets on an old Williams board, your 24 pin sockets are, are, are going to be what you're going to use to replace those. So, uh, I've got just different varying degrees of those that I can go ahead and place out. Uh, there, there are a couple different versions of those. We'll get into that maybe later. Uh, and then also 40 pins. So if you're using a PIA, a CPU, that's going to be 40 pins. So you always want to have some sockets of those to, uh, to have as well. Now in this top level here, uh, what also is really important here is I do have some electrical components. I don't have all of them, but I have some things that are you know, high value. So one thing you're going to really want to pick up is these uh, uh, diodes here. Now I use 1N4004s. Uh, you also see 1N4001s. Uh, so you know, basically these are a little bit of a higher voltage, but these are a direct replacement for 4,000 ones. They just can take a little bit more uh, uh, from that. So, you know, feel free to uh, uh, just use those and, and feel, feel okay about everything. Also, uh, in terms of resistors, I like to keep my resistors. So here's quarter watt, you know, one ohm to one K ohm, uh, and then bumped out. So if I've got, you know, quarter watt, half watts, you've got all those ability to have all those there. Other board work things here, so you're getting into other types of uh, 
Uh, you know, we've got some transistors, our, our TIP 102s, our TIP 122s, TIP 42s. So, you know, driver transistors being used on either the lamp or switch matrix or, you know, from a coil perspective, you've got those. And then finally here at the bottom, um, you've got headers and Molex connectors. So one thing that you'll see here is um, I buy these large sticks of pressure. So this is what the, the pressure-related Molex headers. Um, you can buy the ones that don't have the pressure, the, the, the pressure fit here on them. I, I find that the pressure just gives you that more of that, that confidence that you're making a good connection. Also, you can see here that these pins are square and they're not, uh, not round. Again, for a, a much tighter connection. Uh, you can buy them in these long sticks and then they're easy to cut down with snips. So don't just go out and buy the right size at like Mouser or Great Plains Electronics or places like that. Just buy the longer sticks and then cut them down. I do have some in this uh, 156 header. 156 headers being the ones that you use mostly for uh, connectors as I drop things. Uh, so here's the same thing but without the pressure. So sometimes I'll use these if I'm in a situation that I don't want to use my nicer ones with the, the pressure mount. But uh, I've got those as well. Now... In order to make that, you're going to have some different Molex down here. So I've got my terminal pins. Your terminal pins, and I'll show this in the video, uh, look something like this. And this is what you're actually going to connect to the wire to fit in the actual connector. So uh, your connectors, again, uh, I'll just throw a, a, some nines in here. So a connector looks like this. You probably have seen these. These are different from the IDC connectors or the insulation displacement connectors that came on many of the machines. These are Molex connectors that are using those terminal pins to actually make a much tighter connection. Uh, you'll see a lot of people uh, recommend these uh, across different sites. This is all I use. I don't use IDC connectors. I, I just don't feel like they're, uh, they last. These uh, last much, much longer. Again, uh, I, I do have a couple different sizes. Uh, but when I bought these very early on in doing some pinball restoration, I did not realize that you can just buy a 14 pin or larger. And then again, you just cut it down to make it fit the right size for you. So just note that, that the 14 is uh, really big there. Now, moving down here, I do want to show uh, kind of my pride and joy, which is my uh, parts bin that I bought from Radio Shack. So here in the United States, uh, Radio Shack went out of business. Uh, they closed all the retail stores. And I bought this nice parts bin uh, from Radio Shack. I think it cost me about $150. And what I've done is outfitted it in a way where now I have all my pinball parts uh, more or less in these bins. So if I pull out something, let's say, like this. Actually, this is my bin for testing equipment. Also, my bin for paints. Uh, and, and then actually, this is actually a great place, is parts I end up taking out, finding, or not using. So all this information right here, um, all these different parts. So if I'm looking for something very specific that maybe I need a, a, you know, a, a part just to get me by, uh, and I've got to do so like, for example, if I need a post and this one does not look very healthy, I at least can have something to stick in uh, for the time being until I order the right part. Uh, moving forward, I'll just kind of go through a couple of these real quickly. Uh, here's some more electronical compo electronic components. Uh, one thing you see here is that we I do carry some other Molex connectors. These are things that you'll find uh, maybe from the power supply perspective or um, from the back box to, to play field size. So I've got some different sizes here uh, on the, the .093 headers. Uh, and I do have the terminals for those as well because they're going to use a little bit of a different terminal point. Uh, and actually, we'll show those. So on the .93s, the terminals look more like this. So these are actually females here. Uh, that are in just a, a, a line, you would break these off, but they would fit in the appropriate direction if this is male or female, which I, I'm not looking at very closely right now, uh, will fit in from that perspective. So great to have these as well, especially if you've got ones, uh, these do burn out, especially if they're carrying a, a high enough amount of voltage, maybe on a power supply or rectifier board, um, you may pl uh, find these that need to be replacing. So just some electrical com components there. Uh, moving forward, <coughs> excuse me, uh, some more electrical components. I'm also starting in uh, some other key things here. So in VRAM, I try to keep a little bit of in VRAM as, as well. Uh, I buy usually Pinatech, but there's also uh, any, in, uh, any in VRAM as well. I also have bought these out of China. These are uh, hard to read. These are Ramtron. So these are just a, uh, I bought these for some WPC games as well, which are a direct replacement. Uh, a little bit different in terms of... Uh, uh, they do work, but they're much cheaper. So sometimes, if I need to get a you know a, RAM, a NVRAM in by a pinch or you know, within a pinch, I can do that very quickly. 
But Pit Attack makes great products, and I like uh, using them. Uh, we also started getting some lamps. So I have just some regular 44 incandescent bulbs. Uh, if I'm doing a machine or something and just need some regular incandescence, that's great. Uh, and I believe these are 906, so these are some flash bulbs. I don't really like using LED flashers. I do have some, but I do like incandescent flashers. I think it just uh, completes the look. And this is the thing that I like the most. This is my LED bin. So I buy uh, all my LEDs from Comet Pinball. And then I have them kind of labeled by color. So for example here, here's some greens. Now on the greens and whatnot, I will use the same type of uh, lamps, uh, just maybe different colors. I always use the 2SMD 2835s, which is I believe what Stern was using on most of their new games. Uh, and then I also do like the frosted lens. So if you're interested in the games that I do, I, this is, these are my go-to bulbs. Uh, obviously, you can get those in a 44 or in a triple five bayonet. So I have these very listed out by games, but they're all the exact same bulbs, just different colors. So I've got those. I've got reds. I like the ice blue uh, in terms of using more of the royal blue. And then I have not only my 555 uh, natural white. I also have just the 44 natural white. And I also do keep some warm white, or what do you call that more like that, oh, as I just spill them all in there, uh, some incandescent white or warm white. It's also important, uh, I, I don't know why people don't do this more often. It's always important to save your old, bulb, uh, old bulbs for a couple different reasons. Number one, you may be getting a machine that you want to use incandescence and you want to actually uh, fall back to these. So some of these bulbs work and some don't, but I can obviously test those prior to. But also the thing is too, if you're working on a machine and uh, like for example, the Silver Ball Mania that I finished up already, I actually painted the back box insert behind the uh, back glass and it made it a nice bright white. Uh, instead of taping off each individual lamp bulb socket, what I did is I actually used burnt out bulbs, burnt out 44 bulbs, and then just spray painted them white because I was going to throw them away anyway. So this is something that's really interesting uh, about keeping, making sure that you can reuse them, at least get some sort of use and uh, a much lazier and quicker way of, of, of painting your back box inserts. So always great to save those. We move up, we start to move into other key things that are important, uh, leg levelers, uh, coin box uh, door locks, uh, we've got a bunch of leg bolts, some other miscellaneous things, buttons, quick connects, uh, cable clamps, uh, I found these at Radio Shack as well, they're not the greatest in the world, but they, uh, they work, and they replace the old ugly yellow ones. Uh, so this is pretty much the pop bumper and coil. Uh, coil sleeve uh, thing. So we've got all types of like, uh, pop bumper bodies, some extra skirts, some flipper bushings, some spoons, uh, some pop bumper uh, um, uh, new uh, lamp sockets, uh, and then obviously your, your your regular coil sleeves. You know, our, our two and three quarter coil sleeves, our one and three quarter uh, back here. Now, one little quick quick trick, something that uh, my buddy Jerry showed me, is you know. This diameter, are, these are actually the same diameter in terms of coil sleeves. It's just that one is a little bit longer than the other. So one thing you can do if you don't want to buy necessarily two or you need to get a, you know, a bush fix, you just take one of these and cut it down. Uh, it's going to work just the same. Just make sure you get the cut nice and clean and it matches and you'll be ready to go. So if you're looking to start a collection or maybe start some parts bins, just buy the, uh, the, little bit of the, lar the, the longer one and save yourself uh, a little bit of frustration on the one and three quarter inch. Or, yeah. Last one is at the top, uh, rubbers. So I do try to keep a, a vast amount of rubbers. I do like Titan. So here's some Titan flipper bands. Uh, I, I, I've got some just different sizes of white and black. I do have some yellows that were left over from a prior thing. I also make sure I buy a lot of the smaller diameters. I, I find these are pretty much always uh, destroyed on machines. So for example, uh, I think the 3 8s are correct here. If we look at Jurassic Park, which is something I want to start doing some more videos on uh, here soon. But you can look here. So this machine is, I don't believe it's ever had the rubbers changed on it or it's been a while. This rubber is just absolutely destroyed. Um, I find that the ones, it seems like a lot of times that the smaller rubbers don't seem to last as long. So this is always great about keeping a lot of extras of these around. Yeah, even more than this longer rubbers. Uh, same with flipper rubbers. They seem to kind of... Um, uh, wear out, especially from play. I always keep a, a variety of different colors and sizes. I think I've got some black in here as well. Uh, but it's always good to keep those in because if something breaks on one of my machines here at my house, I want to be able to get that back up and going without doing any kind of crazy 
fixes to try to make that work. So really cool here on the uh, parts bins. That keeps going down. Uh, I've got some stuff that's probably not pinball related towards the bottom, but I just want to kind of show some, some key things from that side. Uh, moving on over to my workbench. So I do want to kind of point out some key tools. Uh, if anybody's interested in maybe going into a more of an in-depth series about the tools that I use, uh, let me know in the comments section and I'll cover a tool uh, much, you know, much more in a, in a greater detail. Uh, so, the, you know, kind of at the top of my uh, table here is I have a very nice, although dusty, uh, magnifying glass that is lighted. So if I'm working on board work or something of that nature, I, I've got a nice light here that I can uh, pronounce on something and see if I'm making sure I'm not bridging any connections or contacts or traces based on this. So having a nice magnification uh, facility is really great uh, to have. I also want to move on to my uh, my homemade uh, power supply unit. So all this is is a computer power supply. And <clears throat> what I've done, if you look online, I'll, maybe I'll post a link here in the in the description, is how you can actually make one of these. Uh, a, a quick Google search will find it as well. But what I got here is obviously ground, 12 volts, plus 12 volts VDC, plus 5 volts VDC, plus 3.3 volts VDC. And I believe I got a couple of these extra ones out here. Uh, one of these is actually, I think, negative 12 volts VDC, which is uh, uh, this uh, this blue one. And I, I do not remember the uh, the white one here. Uh, yes, yeah, also the whole death. So don't stick your finger in there because uh, uh, you'll die. <laughs> not really. But uh, power supply works really great, especially if you've got a board and you want to be able to power it appropriately. Um, you can be able to set that up, uh, click the on switch, be able to go. Um, this works great in a, ma a majority of situations. Obviously, with this, I can't I can't necessarily power things that need more power. If I'm trying to you know do a coil test on the bench, I don't have the ability to do that because I can't produce uh, plus 48 VDC uh, for a certain board. So this is a great place to start, uh, especially if you've got these laying around. I'm an IT guy for my day job. I have an absolute ton of old power supplies that lay around. This is one that I just sacrificed and. Uh, made. Uh, underneath that is actually something that's actually really important, and that is my uh, my, my Heiko fan. So um, uh, not really great to breathe anything from a solder perspective uh, in terms of the, the exhaust, so I always use this to uh, when I need it to uh, make sure I, I pull those fumes away from me. Moving forward, you'll see I do carry a lot of Heiko equipment. I find to be better than Weller, although I think Weller is a very close number two. Uh, this is an, a Heiko uh, FX Triple Eight D soldering iron. Uh, it's been my favorite. It is a workhorse. It comes with me in my go bag when I'm working on friends' uh, pinball machines. Uh, the tips are all amazing in terms of what I'll what I use. I think I'll do an in depth review on this later, but um, I, I've been very pleased with this. It, it's a little bit expensive for a traditional hobbyist. I would say that if you wanted to, there's a couple of step downs on some constant temperature or single temperature uh, soldering irons, but I've been really pleased with this. And then the other one that I think is worth its weight in gold is the Heiko uh, FR300 soldering uh, desoldering iron. Uh, mine is a little dirty right now, as you can tell by inside there, but I can tell you this thing is amazing. Um, I think when I bought it, it was about 279 but the amount of frustration of using solder wick and trying to pull off things like headers uh, and, and working on getting chips off boards, especially when you're doing very tight traces like WPC boards, this comes in very, very handy. Um, you have to be a little bit careful with these because uh, not only does the size of the tip here matter in terms of what you're doing, but also, uh, also the amount of heat this thing can generate. Um, so I actually keep mine pretty low. Like... Uh, was it between one and one, one and one and a half, so about one and a quarter? It's plenty of heat to be able to do almost anything you want to from this perspective. Um, great tool if you do any type of NV rim replacement or you want to get into board repair work, like changing headers on your own. You know, definitely try to do it prior to, but you're gonna probably want to get one of these. Um, I, I've again, I would say of all the money in terms of tools I've spent, this has been one of the nice, th nicest things that I have. So. I'll do an in-depth video maybe that on that uh, later from a pinball perspective. Uh, Anti-static mats, obviously connected, really great to have, uh, making sure that you're not um, um, uh, causing any static issues when you're working on board work. Uh, I am a Kester fan. I use uh, 
only Kester style uh, uh, let it solder. Uh, I actually got I can't remember what this thing is. is point three three millimeters, uh, but it, it, you know it's it's got the um, flux uh, flux internal on it too. Uh, John Wart, who is uh, one of the uh, pinball restore. Uh, quote unquote legends. I'll say that about John. Uh, it really turned me on to Kester Kester um, solder. Um, I have not looked back. It is it is so much better to buy good solder. It just flows better. It works better. Um, it, I, I just won't use anything else. So I actually have a couple different uh, um, uh, diameters. This is my smaller diameter. I use this for mostly board work. I do have a larger diameter in my cabinet. So if I'm doing work on maybe putting coil coils back on, uh, you know, soldering coil lugs, and I'm doing that on, in a machine, you know, I want to need a little bit heavier solder, a little bit more flux, I, I may move to that. Uh, let me just see, oh, here's my, a little bit heavier, so I keep my remnants, so here's a little bit of heavier, you can see the difference in the diameter here uh, between the two, so I may take something like this, it's much more stiff, carry it with me if I'm doing work, you know, on a machine, so it gives me a little bit more, uh, instead of something that's maybe a little more floppy or, or not as, not as rigid, is a little bit thicker diameter. Um, one other thing I like to show here uh, is deoxit. If you're not familiar with deoxit, again, I may do a video on this later as well, but um, if you're working on any type of copper uh, leaf switches, uh, deoxit really just does a great job of getting any kind of oxidation off those switches, increases contact, uh, electrical conductivity between those switches. I find this to be great. I like the nail polish version. They, they have about four or five different versions and just uh, different appli uh, applications. But the nail polish version, I think, works best for what I do with the, with uh, applying the copper leaf switches. So we'll cover that in another video. But uh, these are things that, that stay relatively close on my desk. So my workbench here works really well. Um, I move over. I've got some cleaning utilities here. Uh, the thing that I mentioned in my other video is purple power. So um, this stuff is great. I find this to be a lot better than simple green, which I think uh, like John and John's arcade uses a lot. This stuff is great. I will tell you it's a little bit stronger. Um, so if you're using on something like maybe side art or uh, the side of cabinets, you have to be careful. You will, you may start to take a little bit of paint. Um, I do use it on play fields, uh, especially mylard play fields. I think it pulls dirt really well. It's one of those things that you just have to kind of, you know, work with uh, as you go. Uh, one other thing I do want to point out is isopropyl alcohol. This is something to always keep around. That's really great. Um, isopropyl alcohol, alcohol and naphtha are the two things that I use a lot of to, um, uh, you know, help with cleaning and clean up of certain specific things. Uh, I think I would be hard pressed without mentioning Novus, uh, as well as Novus One and Novus Two. So, uh, Novus, if you go to any pinball repair or any type of pinball restoration site, you, you always will see people use Novus. These are the gold standard of of pinball cleaning. So, I, I don't want to go into too much of detail. Just to let you know that obviously, pin, uh, Novus Two is going to be kind of a go to in terms of your your regular playfield cleaning. Uh, any types of cleaning, uh, the, you know, post-cleaning or playful plastics, uh, you definitely want to look towards uh, Novus One. There's a lot of, of, of uh, more technical detail in terms of when to use Novus, on uh, what type of era machines that you should look into. But that information's out there. Look at anything that Vid does on Pinside. He has uh, the, the most in-depth as possible. The last thing that I do want to point out here is a good set of disposable gloves. So these come from Harbor Freight. I like the five mil thickness. I think it's just about the right uh, the right amount. These are also powdered free, which I think are also really good. Always great to have those. I don't know about anybody else, but Purple Power and these other kind of cleaner and degreasers just really kind of dry your hands out. Um, and so I always use the gloves. Uh, you know, as you can see here, I'm already getting dirty again. But uh, those are something that are always worth. Uh, having and picking up. Um, I do want to talk a little about uh, storage bins. So let's say, for example, here I've got my storage bin. If I'm working on parts, let's say I'm taking apart uh, Jurassic Park here. I'm going to do my next video when I start to shop out this and show you how I use these plastic storage bins. But they're really great that if you're taking something apart and you're going to bag and tag it for later, you start here getting it into a bin and then taking the bin and then moving it on to maybe a plastic bag. Uh, this is something that I use a lot of. These little bins, again, I actually I think these come from uh, Harbor Freight, but you can find these on Amazon everywhere else. It's great to, to have these. I've got uh, quite a set that I'll use. Uh, I will also use this set, which I think came from Harbor Freight, which is a just a larger pan 
that you can move nuts and bolts into and turn them into a bin or to a, a plastic bag. So for example here, here's my beginning of uh, uh, taking the apron off for Jurassic Park and you can see I've already started my bagging process from that. Uh, moving on, just uh, kind of going around, I've got a couple machines. Uh, there's a space shuttle play field that I'm working with a friend on. Uh, I've got an old cyclone play field that a friend gave me just to play with. Uh, may hang that up. It's super dirty though. I should probably clean that. Uh, Silver Barrel Mania, like I mentioned, I fixed up uh, and it already sold it off to a friend. Uh, that was a great restore. Wish I was taking more video during that. Uh, I think it came out really well. Uh, kind of a, a survivor that was found in a garage. Uh, needed a lot of work. Uh, but the the cabinet was in pretty decent shape, except for maybe the little bit of the front there it was a little faded. Uh, so, and the back glass is absolutely spectacular. That's a that's a that's our original back glass. I think it, I think it just really shines. And I think the play field, you know, I think it came out great. It's a good deal. I think my friend's getting a great deal on it. I think he's going to really like it, and it plays fantastic. Uh, moving over, I like to show just a couple more things here. So, again, I've got uh, clamps. You can never have enough clamps. If you need birthday presents, Christmas presents, and you're into pinball, more clamps. All the clamps that your hearts desire. You can't have enough of them. But also, we can start going to here. I've got some custom tools, uh, some more individual things that you may want to look at about buying. Uh, anything like brushes, looking to get dirt off, uh, maybe to do some cleaning. These hard bristle brushes um, are, are, are great for that. Uh, I've got, uh, you know, a... Uh, uh, you know a logic probe here we'll go over this one in larger detail as well i've got i do have some solder wick i've got some old solder this was the solder that i was using beforehand it's not great i would not use it uh and then some extra flux that i hardly ever use uh moving down into here uh nothing really of importance always keeping uh, a ton of different screwdrivers uh, i also have a um uh, a mini screwdriver kit but nothing really fancy there and now I go into a couple of key things with some some more customized things. We we already talked about the uh, the butane torch in terms of flame polishing. I also make sure to get an e clip uh, uh, remover and installer. Uh, these usually go around maybe plungers or maybe certain key um, uh, pl uh, uh, assemblies to remove these. Um, this is just a very cheap brand from China that has some removable heads. I find it great. I have lost some fingernails uh, trying to get e-clips off or using uh, needle nose pliers. These these work a lot better. Uh, this is like three dollars. Um, if you don't have one of these, I would probably pick one up. And then I have a couple of different wire um, uh, taking uh, insulation off wire. So this is a key one here. I think I bought this from Radio Shack a long time ago. Uh, you can see that you've got different um, uh, AWG gauges or uh, numbers here from 18 to 20. And there's actually a 22 that's hidden. But pretty much everything, except for maybe like some WPC games that uses really thin wire, like 24 or 26 AWG, this guy works very well. Uh, I do have one. You can actually find these at Lowe's uh, today. It just senses uh, and actually strips the wire. I like these, but I don't like these as much as I like this one. So definitely something to keep in mind if you... Uh, continue to need to get a good wire stripper uh and by the way if you have these just you, you take this and you take it over here and you put it in the trash can because that's about all it's good for moving on um so we've got a molex uh a crimper so again we saw those terminals earlier those 18 to 20 uh terminals for the molex connectors well you have a specific crimper to do this this is about the cheapest one you can buy which i believe is about 25 to 30 dollars they make some ratcheting ones that are absolutely awesome but they're about 70 dollars which I, I just can't give that for a tool so what you'll do is here you'll put the actual terminal crimp in here and you'll have two different levels of crimp one for the insulation and one for the wire so we'll go through this about how to recrimp uh maybe a connector and we'll do one of those here soon uh, i've got a machine that needs a new connector so maybe we'll make that video next also i i, I did find this as part of the radio shack blowout is this little screwdriver precision kit so i already have a smaller one the way i like about this one and i have this also in my go bag but this one has a little bit of a flexible uh, a flexible um, shaft to it. So if I've got a screw that's in a very wonky place, like maybe on a, on a flipper assembly that I need to get, this is one that I can be able to, to, to kind of get in there and maybe get around some wires. So good to always have little extra things like that from that perspective. 
I have a ton of these. These are some some snips that 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 you can find. Uh, if you if you go to like AliExpress or Wish or places like that, you can find these very cheap. They're on Amazon. But these little snips, these little flush snips, I you really can't have enough of these. Um, I, I probably have about six different pair and in all different places. Uh, you can find these two to three dollars a piece. Uh, but these flush snips, if you're cutting maybe um, leads off components, if you're working on maybe getting a nice flush um, a cut on a on a wire that's been all mangled after it's been soldered on four or five times, you need a nice flush cut. These are great. They can't cut anything too hard. Uh, that's where you need maybe a, a true pair of snips, but they do great at cutting things that are that are really um, a smaller in nature. Ah, now we move in the world of nut drivers. So a couple of different brands here. This was my first brand that I bought, just a Husky brand from Home Depot. It's okay. It, it works fine. It's easy to travel with, but I really enjoy these Crescent. So this is a Crescent branded uh, nut drivers. Uh, the one thing that I like about these is not only just the ergonomic handle, but you can also take the shaft, and this is going to be hard to do one-handed, so I'm going to have to do this off-screen, but you can, uh, let me find one that can work a little bit. Yeah, this is going to be hard. Let me see if I'm... So you can take the shaft, and you can actually pull the shaft out, and then you can actually turn it again. There. And now you can make the shaft actually locked into place. So if you want to get into a situation that you want to move from a nut driver and you need a little bit more torque, uh, you've got the ability to do that right here. I love these. I would recommend. You can also find these at Home Depot. I bought mine online. These are great. I, I use these for almost everything that I take apart. Um, so really, really interesting uh, tool that I have in here just for that. These are very special pliers. These are called vamp pliers. Um, there was, I, I can't remember who turned me on to these in terms of someone on pin side, but uh, after I read about how to remove William's side rails or how to remove twist nails, uh, I, I, I stopped and I went and I bought these. So the one difference about these types of pliers, if you look on the end, they have a little bit of a curve, little concave opening. And what that does, it allows you to grab onto a screw or uh, maybe you know something like twist nails and actually start to actually grab them and twist. So if you have a screw that's been completely stripped and you want an ability to get that stripped screw out without having to drill it out, these work great. These are not cheap. These are about $26, $27 for the smaller version, which is these are the mini vampires. But I will tell you, if you've ever had to work on getting a screw out and it's been a pain in the absolute ass, these are worth their weight in gold. Uh, a very definite tool to pick up from that. Uh, this is actually something I made from a card from Main Event, which I believe is like a Dave & Buster's. But this is my little sockets for measuring uh, flipper width between the bushing and the uh, the flipper shaft uh, on a play field. So for example, fit that in right here between the flipper bushing uh, and there's a lot of room here so that this can move and you're not causing angel wings on the play field. So... Again, cheap. I just made this, so just take an old credit card, uh, which is about the width that you need, and uh, you've got yourself a tool. And I keep that right with my specialty tools as well. I'll make a video on this as well. This looks uh, not like a very cool tool, but this is actually a switch adjustment tool or a, a copper leaf switch adjustment tool. Uh, so this works great if you've got a, let's say, a switch that's not, uh, maybe it's not making contact or... You know, it's it's not gapped appropriately, or it's just been you know mangled to death. This helps to get it back into shape. So you have this. It's, it's actually on both sides has a little bit of a slot. You basically just stick that in to the the um, the the part of the copper leaf you want to adjust, and then you can just twist it. And as you start to twist it, it will actually then you know either gap it appropriately. So uh, this works great. It's a great utility. You know, great little utility. Uh, you can buy these online. I think Pinball Life has them. I'm sure Marco does as well. But uh, again, it's one of those time saver tools. Yeah, you can you can use a, 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 a screwdriver, a flathead screwdriver. But if you want to do a lot of these and do them quickly and try to get a nice bend, uh, these work great. Uh, outside of that, I've got this little tool. Uh, I bought this a long time ago. But basically, it's to get 44 bulbs in and out very quickly. So if you're working where you have maybe a topside play, you know, 
like right here, we've got some uh, uh, some lamps that are coming through the top of the play field. You actually can take this, push it on there, it causes a little bit of a compression fit, and then you can actually turn it to get the bulb out instead of trying to get your fingers in and trying to get in there and, and twist it. Again, a nice little utility, comes in handy. It's in my specialized, uh, my specialized mix set. Oh boy, all kinds of things here. Um, so I've got my magic eraser. We'll talk about that on a different times using this and alcohol to clean a play field. Uh, this is the rubber foam that I use. So this is kind of that beer spill guard or beer guard underneath a lockdown bar. I buy this stuff at, at, at Lowe's. Uh, this rubber foam, it works great. Uh, you can see this is the length and width that I find that works the best. Uh, I, this is all that I buy and this is all I use. I, I've not had this stuff deteriorate on me yet. I'm sure it probably deteriorates after time, but uh, works good for me. I've got all kinds of other tools, some painting things, uh, some Bondo application spreaders. I also have my levelers here. So I've got my levelers for the play field. I also have an electronic one. I'll show that. So if I need some different types of levelers to, to make sure I get my pitch according on my play field correct, I can do that. All right. Last one. So we've got some, uh, <coughs> excuse me, we've got some different wires here, uh, different colors, I believe. This is 18 AWG, and then we have a whole box here of 20 AWG as well. So if I'm looking to maybe build a harness, uh, building a wiring harness, I'm able to do that very easily, and then also keep colors to maybe be appropriate. Uh, so people like, I know like Hep on Pinside, he has just rows and rows and rows of different types and striped uh, blue, white, and white, blue. Uh, red, white. I, I just keep a limited amount here. Also, do have some wire wrap. Uh, so if I'm making, need to make a, a, if I have a trace on a board that's bad, and I need to actually take a little bit of wire wrap and, and, and complete that trace, I always keep a little bit of wire wrap on me as well. Uh, and again, there's that uh, larger bowl of, uh, of solder that I showed earlier, a little bit thicker. And then pinballs. Gotta have pinballs. Really great from that side. Down at the bottom, I've got some microfiber cloth, some other sanding paper, and some cleaning things. Uh, you can also see that I've got all my microfiber cloths that are dirty over here, so I can take these upstairs and wash them. So, yeah, this is kind of it. This is my workshop. So, I'm hoping to show some other great videos, maybe show some how these tools are used, go into a little bit deeper detail. But, yeah, let me know if something catches your eye. Uh, happy to talk about it further. And, yeah, we'll stop there. So, thanks, everyone. We'll chat soon. Mm -hmm.